Welcome to the worship service today at Cherryfield Baptist Church. Uh, we pray that God would bless you as you have gathered here with our uh, people to worship God, and we pray that you would know in a rich way His glory and His love today. I'm going to start the service off today with a call to worship. It's Psalm 119, verses 145 to 152, and it says this, I pray with all my heart, answer me, Lord, I will obey your decrees. I cry out to you, rescue me, that I may obey your laws. I rise early, before the sun is up. I cry out for help, and put my hope in your words. I stay awake through the night, thinking about your promise. In your faithful love, O Lord, hear my cry. Let me be revived by following your regulations. Lawless people are coming to attack me. They live far from your instructions. But you are near, O Lord, and all your commands are true. I have known from my earliest days that your laws will last forever. Let's pray today. Father God, we thank you that you're always near, that you're always with us, God. What an amazing promise. And yet we also know that you are far above us, great in every way, worthy in every way. God, we give you praise and thanks that you are our God, that you love us. And as we heard read today from the text, Lord, we're just so thankful that you faithfully love us, that you hear our cries, and that you revive us when we follow your regulations. Forgive us, Lord, when we lose sight of these glorious truths of your faithful love and how you seek to revive us and hear our cries. Help us to run to you, Lord, in all circumstances and situations, whether we're on the mountain or in the valley. Let us come before you and know you through it all. Thank you for Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Thank you that he shed his blood for our salvation and to pay the debt of our sins. And we pray that your Holy Spirit would be near us today. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
The title of today's message is A Series of Songs. CBC Radio has a show called My Playlist, in which musical masterminds share what songs have inspired their own songwriting and musicianship. This is a common thread among people in our age. They too create playlists on their phones, MP3 players, and iPods that say something about their musical tastes and lyrical inspiration. In a very real sense, Revelation 18 is the playlist or a series of seven songs that describes the many different responses to the fall of Babylon. Let's look at this text now. The words will be on the screen today. This is Revelation 18. It is the Word of God, and it says this. After all this, I saw another angel come down from heaven with great authority, and the earth grew bright with his splendor. He gave a mighty shout, Babylon is fallen, that great city is fallen. She has become a home for demons. She is a hideout for every foul spirit, a hideout for every foul vulture, and every foul and dreadful animal. For all the nations have fallen because of the wine of her passionate immorality. The kings of the world have committed adultery with her. Because of her desires for extravagant luxury, the merchants of the world have grown rich. Then I heard another voice calling from heaven, Come away from her, my people. Do not take part in her sins, or you will be punished with her. For her sins are piled as high as heaven, and God remembers her evil deeds. Do to her as she has done to others. Double her penalty for all her evil deeds. She brewed a cup of terror for others, so brew twice as much for her. She glorified herself and lived in luxury, so match it now with torment and sorrow. She boasted in her heart, I am queen on my throne, I am no helpless widow, and I have no reason to mourn. Therefore these plagues will overtake her in a single day, death and mourning and famine. She will be completely consumed by fire, for the Lord God who judges her is mighty. And the kings of the world who committed adultery with her and enjoyed her great luxury will mourn for her as they see the smoke rising from her charred remains. They will stand at a distance, terrified by her great torment. They will cry out, How terrible, how terrible for you, O Babylon, you great city! In a single moment, God's judgment came on you. The merchants of the world will weep and mourn for her, and there is no one left to buy their goods. She bought great quantities of gold, silver, jewels, and pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, and scarlet cloth, things made of fragrant, fine wood, ivory goods, and objects made of expensive wood, and bronze, iron, and marble. She also bought cinnamon, spice, incense, myrrh, frankincense, wine, olive oil, fine flour, wheat, cattle, sheep, horses, wagons, and bodies, that is, human slaves. The fancy things you love so much are gone, they cry. All your luxuries and splendor are gone forever, never to be yours again. The merchants who became wealthy by selling her these things will stand at a distance, terrified by her great torment. They will weep and cry out, how terrible, how terrible for that great city. She was clothed in finest purple and scarlet linens, decked out with gold and precious stones and pearls. In a single moment, all the wealth of the city is gone. And all the captains of the merchant ships and their passengers and sailors and crews will stand at a distance. They will cry out as they watch the smoke ascend. And they will say, Where is there another city as great as this, 
and they will weep and throw dust on their heads to show their grief. And they will cry out, how terrible, how terrible for that great city. The ship owners became wealthy by transporting her great wealth on the seas. In a single moment, it is all gone. Rejoice over her fate, O heaven, and people of God and apostles and prophets. For at last God has judged her for your sakes. Then a mighty angel picked up a boulder the size of a huge millstone. He threw it into the ocean and shouted, just like this, the great city Babylon will be thrown down with violence and will never be found again. The sound of harps, singers, flutes, and trumpets will never be heard in you again. No craftsmen and no trades will ever be found in you again. The sound of the mill will never be heard in you again. The light of a lamp will never shine in you again. The happy voices of brides and grooms will never be heard in you again. For you merchants were the greatest in the world, and you deceived the nations with your sorceries. In your streets flow the blood of the prophets and of God's holy people, and the blood of people slaughtered all over the world. This is the word of God. May it be blessed today. Let's pray. Father God, we ask, even as we have heard your word read, Lord, that you would help us to understand what it means, that you would send us your spirit of revelation and truth, that you would help us, Lord, to know your heart and to know your ways when it comes, Lord, to uh, the way in which you will judge Babylon. Let us know you now as you speak to us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. For the rest of our time together today, we'll be answering the question, what do these songs reveal about the fall of Babylon? There's seven songs in this text. We're going to start with the first one, and that is this. Number one, a song of surety. In these first verses, an angel comes down from heaven with great authority, and the earth grew bright with his splendor. The authority and brightness come from God himself and from his glory. He gives a mighty shout, Babylon is fallen, that great city has fallen. So eminent is her destruction that the angel speaks as though it has already happened. The city will become so desolate that it will become a hideout. For only the unclean spirits, birds, and animals of our world. Why such a complete destruction? Revelation 18 verse 3 says this. For all the nations have fallen because of the wine of her passionate immorality. The kings of the world have committed adultery with her. Because of her desires for extravagant luxury... The merchants of the world have grown rich. Three crimes have contributed to her demise. Passionate immorality, spiritual adultery, and exploitation as the way to extravagant luxury. These three crimes are caught up in the image of drinking. G.K. Beale says that to drink here refers to one's willingness to commit to idolatry in order to maintain economic security. Once one imbibes, the intoxicating influence removes all desire to resist Babylon's destructive influence." End quote. Once one drinks of the passionate immorality of Babylon, there is a spiritual adultery that rejects God, embraces the world order, and engages in the exploitation of others for financial security. The gospel of Jesus Christ clearly announces that true security is found in him. It is true worship that renders the idolatry of the world as a farce. Such idolatry will bring those who embrace it to an end. This song of surety 
displays the impending fall of Babylon. It serves to warn us of the shaky reality of the world order. How does such a view inspire you to prioritize your faith in Jesus? The second revelation concerning Babylon and the second psalm is this. Number two, a psalm of se separation. Another voice um, calls from heaven with a song that starts with Revelation 18.4, and it says this, Come away from her, my people. Do not take part in her sins, or you will be punished with her. This is a word of significant warning. It is interesting that in verse 6, when it says, Double her penalty for all her deeds, the word translated double could be better translated duplicate. In other words, the punishment that Babylon will endure is the duplication of the sins she has inflicted on God's people. Christians are exhorted to come away from her because that which is foul and unclean in her is associated with the idolatry of Babylon. This is an echo from Isaiah 52, verse 11, which says in reference to Babylon, Get out. Get out and leave your captivity, where everything you touch is unclean. Get out of there and purify yourselves. G.K. Beale states that Christians are not being called to withdraw from economic life or from the world in which they live but they may be ostracized because of their refusal to compromise. They are to remain in the world to witness and to suffer for their testimony, but they are not to be of the world." End quote. Those who are of the world give themselves to a spiritual force that seeks to oppose God. It is a statement of faith and spiritual devotion this is why Jesus called the seven churches to be overcomers. If we do not overcome the world in Jesus' name, then it will overcome us. In what ways are you still captive to sin and the world? Titus 2, 11-14 shows us the way to purify ourselves, and it is found in drawing down on the grace of God. Titus 2, 11-14, says this, For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. And we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God, while we look forward with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be revealed. He gave his life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us, and to make us his very own people, totally committed to doing good deeds. What is your proximity to God's grace today? For it is as we draw down on the grace of God that we purify ourselves. Now the third song is really a group of three songs, and we're going to uh, look at it uh, today as, again, a revelation of the responses of many uh, to Babylon. And so this is number three, it says this. Number three, three songs of sorrow. In this section of songs, Three groups of people lament the destruction of Babylon. They are kings, merchants, and seafaring crews. The kings lament the destruction of Babylon on two fronts. First, they know that their economic prosperity is tied to Babylon's economic prosperity. Because of the judgment of Babylon, these kings understand that they will suffer economic loss. Also, the kings lament the judgment of Babylon 
because they understand it to be the justice of God. They fear the same judgment for them because they were complicit, complicit with Babylon, which in this specific case is Rome. The second group of people are the merchants. William Hendrickson describes how widespread the judgment is on the economy and trade systems of Rome. He says this, Observe that to this catalog of cargoes which belong to Babylon and which perish, every department of existence makes its contribution. The mineral kingdom, gold, silver, etc. The plant kingdom, fine linen, silk, etc. The animal kingdom, ivory, cattle, sheep, etc. And even the kingdom of man, bodies and souls of men. The result is that when Babylon perishes, the economic chaos is complete. The world of the unbeliever, on which he has pinned his hopes and built his trust, collapses." End quote. Part of the lament of the merchants is found in Revelation 18.14, which says, The fancy things you love so much are gone, they cry. All your luxuries and splendor are gone forever, never to be yours again. Finally, the seafaring crews of captains, passengers, sailors, and crews lament the destruction of Babylon. They look in horror on the destruction of Babylon and lament because they see the ruins of their hopes and desires. There will be a great lament when Babylon falls. That which appeared secure and trustworthy will be gone. How can we shine the light of the security and trustworthiness of Jesus Christ to the world? And how can we ensure that we are not complicit with the world order? The fourth song is this, a song of satisfaction. Revelation 18, verse 20 says this, Rejoice over her fate, O heaven, and people of God, and apostles and prophets. For at last, God has judged her for your sakes. This verse is the vindication of Revelation 6, verse 10, where the saints of God pray these words, O sovereign God, holy and true, how long before you judge the people who belong to this world and avenge our blood for what they have done to us? One of the key statements in this prayer from Revelation 6 verse 10 is how these people are described. It is said that they belong to this world. God's judgment of Babylon is ultimately God's judgment of the satanic system of the world order and her imperialism. God judges the people who belong to this world by destroying the very thing from which they sought security and in which they worshipped, the world order. This judgment displays the reality that true security is found in God alone and that true worship belongs to God alone. How do these truths keep you from compromising your faith by loving the world. The fifth and final song in this chapter is this. Number five, a song of subdual. The song of subdual displays how God has overthrown the world order. Much like a large stone thrown into the sea sinks and disappears underwater, so Babylon will never be found again. The world order and imperialism will never rise again. God will be victorious. He will subdue this heinous enemy. Music will cease. Trade will cease. Production will cease. Light will cease. And happiness will cease. Also, God will judge Babylon with her own sins that she poured out on his people. G.K. Beale sums it up this way. The daily pleasures taken from 
Christians through economic, social, and political persecution will be taken from the world system. And the sound of harpists and musicians and flute players and trumpeters will, be, will not be heard any longer. And the voice of the bridegroom and bride will not be heard in you any longer. End quote. How does it encourage your faith to know that God will subdue his enemies? Let's pray today. Father God, as we have read from your word today, many will be the responses of the fall of Babylon. Horror, sorrow, celebration, warning. Lord, all of these are found in the responses of the destruction of Babylon. And God, we ask today, as we reflect on these verses, that you would help us not to compromise our faith or to be complicit with the world order uh, that will fall under your judgment. And this world order is symbolic of Babylon. Lord God, we pray instead that we would be devoted to Jesus Christ, that we would walk closely with him, that we would seek, Lord, uh, to abstain uh, from that which the world engages in, that, Lord, you would help us to be witnesses uh, faithfully and truly in this world, and that you would help us to worship you alone. For we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. A word of benediction today. May the grace of the Lord and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.